Grab it. I don't know, what do you see? All right, Zach, say it again for posterity. What is that over there? <laughs> stop, stop. Before we go any further, we've got to rewind a little bit. In fact, we have to go back all the way to the year 1855. You're not gonna believe this. We gotta go back to 1855. I don't believe it. So, 165 years ago, my ancestors came across the Atlantic Ocean from Sweden on one of these things. They came to Sanfeet County, Utah, and settled in a small town called Fountain Green. Those first parents had a son whose name was James Jorgensen, who eventually became bishop of the area and one of the richest men in the territory. Unfortunately for him, he was also a polygamist, which meant that at the time he was fleeing the U.S. Marshals. He ran to California where he started the world's greatest pigeon farm and somehow allegedly brought about some awful family curse, but <laughs> that's a story for another time. There's no curse on this family. Today's story is actually about his son, whose name was Hiram Jorgensen. He looks like he could probably rob a couple of stagecoaches with his bare hands, but he was actually born partially crippled, and his job was to be the town watchman, where he looked out for angry Native Americans, invading aliens, and uh, anything else that might need warning of. But today's story actually starts in 1976, when my grandpa Blaine Jorgensen wrote a book called Charlie's Monument. As the story goes, Charlie's Monument came to my grandpa by inspiration in the middle of a seminary lesson, which sounds kind of crazy, but the really crazy part is that it wasn't until years later when he was about to publish the book that my grandpa found out that the story of Charlie's Monument actually bears strikingly eerie resemblance to the life of Hiram Jorgensen, including, but not remotely limited to, the practice of building monuments. But we never quite knew where the original monuments actually were, because there are so many copycats around the county. But recently, my Uncle Greg received some tips from local shepherds that might change that. So up here in these hills, me, my dad, and my brother Zach have all come out here on an excursion. looking for these for these, these monuments and we don't really know where they are we're just we know the general area we're just out here trekking across this stupid mountain <laughs> holy crap these dumb bushes i'm never gonna get through this thing both these sheep herders say they're close together <laughs> okay <laughs> that's all i know and they said they look like this but they have the ability to make a fire on the top of them and that's what grandpa Hiram did he would make two fires if he was okay and one fire of the Indians were cool. Okay. That's how, so, that's how she knew he was still alive. Because there were two different monuments, right? Yeah. They're supposed to be side by side. They're supposed to be like within feet of each other. Hey, you guys have a good time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Get this out to there. Kind of like this, it goes whoop and it drops down, bouncing and chucking and slipping and sliding. At a certain point, it started to get steeper. Just make sure you're in first gear, Taylor. Shut up, Zach. There duct tape on this because there's a bolt under here that will fall out if it's not there and it needs to be there. Okay, <laughs> it's not gonna hurt. You. Okay, I've been riding. I, I like believe this. you. It may not look like much, but somewhere in these hills is a hundred year old pile of rocks. You want to kind of go down along the edges of some of these aspen groves? As Greg said, his 
carvings are everywhere. But before we can find the monuments, first we have to find something else. A very particular tree carving done by Hiram himself, purportedly on some of the aspen trees nearby the monuments. The funny thing about aspen trees is that it's almost impossible to find anything. We find the carving, we find the monuments. So far, I've not seen anything. What? What? That's a ladder. When Hiram was up here, we're talking early 1900s. Find one? <laughs> oh snap. Mistaken. See, I knew they'd be on these old trees. This has got to be the big fat ones. It's almost just part of the tree. Okay, so when we first set out this morning, I wasn't sure if we were going to find anything. But the fact that we found the family brand carved into this aspen tree, I gotta say that that is pretty dang encouraging. Okay, so we've been bushwhacking it across this mountain for quite a ways now, and there's still no sign of Hiram's monument. There, <sighs> over the hill there is Fountain Green. And there's my brother. Hi, Zach. So the idea is that he would spend a lot of time in the Aspen Groves. We've already explored some up there. And now we're kind of heading down there to that packet. <laughs> I'm just thinking about a branch flying back and whipping that lens. Ah. Falling. That it? I don't know, what do you see? <laughs> Alright, Zach, say it again for posterity. What is that over there? <laughs> <laughs> What, what's, Wait, what's that? No, your, get, your, okay. your, your look of genuine surprise is the best part of the video. Should we see it? <laughs> it's right there. I love that you guys were just like standing right here for like the last 10 minutes. <laughs> we walked 10 feet and then we're like, oh look at that, it's right there. <laughs> Holy crap you guys. This was so freaking cool. I mean, our whole family has grown up on stories and reading books and even reading poems about these monuments for as long as any of us can remember. All my life they've been part of me and now here they were, not just a metaphor or a family legend, but real live traces of my own family legacy. A legacy that I could reach out and touch. We just barely walked up to it, right, as you call. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I get my binoculars out, you're a tiny little stick figure. <laughs> I got no hope of being you. <laughs> so are we in agreement that, uh, that that is the sister monument? I would have to say yes, because here's, and here's why. Because rocks like that don't just pile up by themselves? It, no, that's the first thing. If he had to light both fires to let his family know that he was okay versus just one, he would want them close enough to each other because it didn't have to go very far to do it. So he didn't cause confusion. Wouldn't you think so? We're told that 
One of the reasons Hiram built monuments in the first place was because he was afraid. Afraid he wouldn't amount to anything or be remembered by anyone. I don't know if that's true or not, but if it is, I hope that somehow he knows that he was successful. Because I'm probably going to remember this day for the rest of my life. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Oh my gosh, I just almost killed this camera. This was a super cool experience for me to be a part of and I especially love that I got to do it with my dad and my brother Zach. Greg, sorry that you weren't able to make it. It's a real bummer. And this goes to everyone else in our family as well. I'm sorry that you weren't able to be there with us, but that's why I made this video so you could experience it vicariously. However, if the video was not enough for you, then go ahead and check out some of the links down in the description. I've provided more detailed instructions on how to get there yourself. Just be sure to be safe. Wear helmets if you take an ATV, don't be like us. Be sure to take a firearm maybe too because there was an animal that had been like shredded to pieces that we came across a long time ago obviously with decaying and rotted away and everything. But still, there are obviously predators in the area so you might want to have a firearm of some kind somewhere to defend yourself. Last but not least, please be respectful of the area. As you can see, one of the other monuments had been dismantled and thrown all over the ground and uh, Personally, we would prefer that that didn't happen to the one monument still standing. So if you do happen to go, please be respectful and uh, have fun, be safe, be good. Thanks again for watching and uh, have a great day. Okay guys, there's some kind of brick in there. A modern looking brick. All we gotta do is remove this rock right here. Oh. It's a paver. It's a paver. It is, it's a <laughs> freaking paver. People must have added to this thing. If someone was looking for something historical, they would have been sorely disappointed by that. <laughs>